It's inevitable that the journey towards the understanding and appreciation of William Shakespeare's plays will eventually lead us here. I'm standing on the stage of the Swan Theatre, one of the auditoria of the Royal Shakespeare Company here in Stratford-upon-Avon in England. You're about to witness what may be a unique experiment in the performing of Shakespeare. A group of American and British actors, most of whom had never worked together before, convened in New York for an intensive two-day workshop sponsored by Applause Books and led by the legendary Cicely Berry. Now, many of these actors will be known to you through their starring roles in movies and plays, but they didn't attend this workshop as stars, but as students in search of a deeper understanding of their craft. And what makes it so special, perhaps unique, is that we see this truly wonderful group of actors from both sides of the Atlantic working together and finding a collective response to Shakespeare's language. As an actor, I know only too well what a difficult and courageous thing it was for them to do, knowing that the camera was recording it, mistakes and all. But you'll see them discovering layers of meaning and rhythm in the text for themselves, laying themselves open to doing exercises, making mistakes. But also, and this is important, finding the joy in the language. Shakespeare seems to satisfy some hunger in ourselves for language. He offers us stories that connect with something very deep inside us. And the actor's challenge is to learn to speak it so it communicates with today's audience, almost to make it sound colloquial. The work was also about bringing together two disparate acting styles, British and American, to see how each way of working could feed and nourish the other, not by saying there's only one way of doing it, but by pooling ideas and finding out how the cultures interact. In this first workshop, Sis and the actors look at rhythm. For any actor, Making the verse sound natural is a never-ending quest. Iambic pentameter is often seen as an obstacle to communication, but if it's used right, it can be the most wonderful aid to any actor. In my experience, when it's mastered, it works like a ramp, carrying me, the actor, into a higher plane emotionally from which my own experience and imagination can then take wing. First, we'll be looking at two sonnets the prologue to Romeo and Juliet, which is written in sonnet form, and sonnet 129. And as we do it, we'll be beating out the rhythm. second one, we just work the second bit. Yeah, but we're, do we're doing it as if it's finished. Right. Yeah. Anytime. Yes. Yes. You want us to start? Whenever right. you're ready. Can we gather, please? Can we collect? Can we gather? <laughs> <laughs> right. We're going to do something really oh dear. <laughs> well, there is much to say. These workshops are primarily about Shakespeare, the speaking of Shakespeare now. The bottom line question must surely be, how does the modern actor connect with that often extravagant language, yet feel truthful in today's world? As soon as we look at a Shakespeare play, we know it is different in some way. We know, we can see it is mainly written in blank verse. We know the verse line is an iambic pentameter. Now, don't be put off by the term iambic pentameter. All it means is that there are five stressed beats in each line, and in each line, each beat is made up of one weak and one strong syllable. Titum, 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 titum. And when the iambic pentameter pattern is broken, it is telling us something i.e. there is a clue to the character and the situation because the rhythm is broken somewhere. Within that strip iambic beat there is an infinite variation of rhythm and word texture. 
We know that the writing moves often into prose, and when it does, there is a reason for it. We know also that it contains forms of rhetoric like antithesis, assonance, alliteration, ladders of thought, etc., all of which we will be investigating in these workshops. The exercises I've developed are about setting up certain physical resistances in order to help the actor release the language and also their sub your subconscious reaction to it because often one is so caught up in making sense of it that you lose that need or lose the possibility of the language. And it is not until we release it that we find the possibility of the meaning. I hope we'll see that accent in itself is not a stumbling block. By that I mean actors often feel that the most important thing in Shakespeare is to speak it right, either in received pronunciation in the UK or standard American. I believe this emasculates the language, makes it feel at a distance. After all, Shakespeare did not write in received pronunciation or standard American. What we in this group have to find is the muscularity of this language, the sense that words, thoughts are movement, movement within ourselves. We want it to sound as though it is being spoken for now, yet we also want to honor the rhythm and the image because the image tells us about that interior world. So how do we enter this imaginative world? If we keep it as only being truthful to ourselves now, we diminish it. And as actors, we have to ask, is there something here which takes us further than the psychological dilemma of the character? We also need to get the audience to hear something beyond the text, beyond the literal understanding of the motive the feeling, the meaning, to hear what is under the text. And so much has been written about Shakespeare and about how to perform it as if there were a right way, that it is difficult to throw all that out at the window and allow our intuition to work, allow us to hear it within ourselves. We want to make it seem ordinary, but not be ordinary. Words should disturb, delight, and provoke the hearer and not merely make sense. Our job is to make people think as well as feel, otherwise we patronize. But to get to this point, we need to work, we need to practice this language to see how its form and music connects with us, with and informs our world. Now, in these workshops, I'm going to be working with Andrew Wade, who is my colleague at the Royal Shakespeare Company. He will be also leading the preparation video. So, um, this is Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> now, I would like to get on to some work. So, gallop apace, you fiery-footed steeds, towards Phoebus Lodging. Enough talk. Let's work. Now, we start our exploration with a straightforward piece of storytelling, the prologue from Romeo and Juliet. This sets up the plot of the play, and like any good story, it excites our interest and makes us want to listen. It is particularly useful because we don't have to worry about character, and so we can concentrate on the form in which it is written. We will find out it tells us so much about the verse rhythms which Shakespeare uses throughout his work. The iambic pentameter. What I'd like to do is that you read it, we read it all together, and can you just move around anywhere in the space, muttering it over to yourself? <laughs> right? Okay, yeah, muttering. Two households, Walking round, speaking it all together, frees us and so helps us to feel the movement of the language itself. We become familiar with the text without feeling any pressure to do it right, for no one is listening. Okay, right. Now, I'm starting with this because it isn't to do with character, do you see, and it's quite good to isolate certain things on it. Just let's do it again. Um, 
beating the meter out. Now, if we take that meter as to tum to tum, so we are now going to beat out the weak and the strong syllables. Notice how much the stress can vary within a single line. And just it is like that there is a tussle going on between the words we stress to keep the meter and the words we need to stress in order to make sense. Just speaking it very gently. The important thing is that we notice when the meter stress and the sense stress do not coincide. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So just beat it through very gently like that. To household folks alike in dignity, in fair Verona where we lay our scene, from fortune grudge break to new mutiny, where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. A pair of star-crossed lovers take their life, whose misadventure piteous overthrows, doth with their death lead their parents' strife. The fearful passage of their death mark love, and the continuance of their parents' rage, which but their children's end not could remove, has now the two hours traffic of our sage. The which, if you with patient ears attend, what here shall miss our toil shall strive to mend. Yes, what do you notice? You catapulted over continuance. <laughs> what? Yes, continuance. I mean, that's very full there. But then those things happen lots in the plays, you know, particularly in the late plays when the lines are very full, you know, and you have to work out where that underlying beat is. Is that underlying beat important anyway? What does it do for it? Perhaps the bottom line in Shakespeare is A, that there is not a full stop till the end of the play, or we have to look at it that way. And B, there's energies of different kinds going on all the time. And one energy is in this meter, is, is how that beat goes through. And you can't stop on it too much. I mean, it is there that we have to, to feel it. So let's do it again, just quite gently. To households both alike in dignity, in fair Verona where we lay our scene, from ancient grudge break to new mutiny, where civil blood makes... You can hear that the meter stress goes to households both alike in dignity, and it's quite regular. But to make absolute sense of it, we need to take time over those first two words, two households, and then both alike in dignity. You can hear how the vowels and consonants in those first two words take longer to speak, whereas in the end words, they are quite short. And nor could remove has now the two hours traffic of our stage, the which if you with patient ears attend, what here shall miss our toil shall strive to mend. It's quite interesting, isn't it, when you do that? What do you hear from it? I mean, all this, all, the whole of the three workshops is really about what we hear under the language, what is there underneath. Some words take much longer to say, for instance, don't they? And that tells us the continuance of their parents' reign. Do you see? All sorts of things happen, and yet there is a beat behind it, underneath, which is sort of keeping it together, keeping its form together. Right. So, should we stand up and do it? Okay. And just walk around and, again, doing it for your own sense changing direction on punctuation marks. Okay, just to get familiar with it. Go. By changing direction at the punctuation marks, we very quickly get a sense of how the thoughts are moving. This is a really useful exercise when working on character. We discover that thought is movement, and it makes us realize how rapidly we change direction in our minds. Thought is also breath. So we start to experience how we are breathing as a character. We have been doing these exercises as a group, but they can be done equally well on your own. Okay, back in the circle. I'd like to read it again, but what I want you to concentrate on 
is being on each word, being on the word. So I'm going to, if, if I don't feel that is happening, I'm going to say what? And you just have to repeat it back. But don't go, sh t don't shout at me. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Two. Two right. How many households? Two. Two. Right. Two. Now, what really this is about is that we tend to read everything in clumps of sense. Do you see? And when we do that, we sometimes miss out things that are happening in the words, a, a sort of activity with words, because it makes us, in a way, present the end thought without discovering the thought as we go through. Right, so this is just an exercise in that. But just know that you're saying two, what? Households. Both. No, I'm getting both alike. I want both alike in dignity. In fair. No, I, this is what I'm saying. It, I don't want in fair Verona, which makes sense for the moment. I want in fair where? Verona. You see, just keep that question going through it. Start it again. Two, Two households, both alike in dignity. When we read a piece of text, our first impulse is to make sense of it. And the danger is that having come to a conclusion about the meaning, we often miss out on the surprise within the language, the possibilities, where it takes you. Where civil blood makes civil hands. No, I'm. Where civil what? Blood. Civil blood, yes. Where civil blood makes civil hands unseen. Do you see what I mean? I mean, it's very late with this, but I think every part that you work on, you need to do this exercise on some part of it. I mean, all the exercises we do, you know, have to be layered through a rehearsal process, and you find more the more you know about your character then you come back to exercises like this. Can we just find out where maybe the line breaks? Because um, a lot of the, uh, it's called a caesura. Usually there is a break in a line, not in every line, but there's a sort of moment where I like to call it a poise. I think Edith, Edith Evans said that, so I'm all right, aren't I? <laughs> a poise, rather than a hold or a pause, because it's not a pause, it's po a poise, while that word can drop into your audience. Because we can only take a certain number of words at a time. I think there's research being done into that, mm -hmm. isn't there? It's like seven and nine words. Or something. Yes. It's often a verse line. Yes. Yeah. That, that we can actually, as listeners, take in. And we want those moments when it can poise on that line. So we, as a listener, know where you are. So just, this may not work. It's quite, it's, it's a bit difficult, but, so maybe the first line goes, two households, both alike in dignity. But, so we're going to do half a line each. And you've just got to make up your mind on the spot where, where it breaks. So if it's wrong, it doesn't matter. There wouldn't be a poise after household, would there? There might be, you see. Yeah, I, I would think, yeah, I two think you would. That, that sets us up yeah. to say, there's two. Yep. Now what? Right. Okay. So we so can take our liberty with I'll that. Take your liberty. <laughs> <laughs> two households. There might be a three breaks, or there might you might feel there are none. So just be free with it. Okay. Two households, both alike in dignity, in fair Verona. Where? <laughs> We lay our scene. From ancient grudge. Break to new mutiny. Where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. Right, let's do it one more time, a little bit quicker. Can we start again? Yep. Two households, both alike in dignity, in fair Verona. Where we lay our scene. From ancient grudge. Break to new mutiny. Where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. From forth the fatal loins of these two foes, a pair of star-crossed lovers take their life, whose misadventured, hideous, overthrow, doth with their death bury their parents' strife. The fearful passage of their death-marked love and the continuance of their parents' rage, uh, which but their children's end not could remove is now the two hours traffic of our stage, the which, if you with patient ears attend, 
What here shall miss? Our toil shall strive to mend. All right. Can we, you can... <laughs> but can you begin to hear it? I mean, this is really, really what this is about. I would have edited it. Right? Is listening, isn't it? Is listening and to see how we can keep our own persona, but keep a rhythm going on, keep something going on. Yeah, it's quite exciting really, isn't it? That sometimes you can't have a break, but sometimes that break just pushes you to the end. I mean, that amazing where civil blood makes civil hands unclean and it feeds that life. It's the last word that is so often the most important word because it turns everything that you've said before on its head. Can you feel that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you notice anything about the last two lines? What? Rhyme. It's, yeah, it's a, it's a sonnet, so it rhymes. There is a resolution about yeah. it. And so often we should be doing other things which just point that up, that there is something coming to a resolution, maybe sometimes a healing. There's hope, too, at the end. I was going to say it also points out the speaker, separates, takes them out of the character of the simple storyteller to, to uh, humility yes, to say, yes. If you don't understand yes. what I'm yes. telling you, we'll do our best yes. to try and help you understand this play. It yes. calls attention to them. Yes. There's a sort of, there's always a kind of existential thing somewhere right. there, isn't there? Let's look at ourselves. The yes. scariest part of it to me <laughs> <laughs> is how to not yeah. be presenting or arguing in front of a group of people, you know? Yeah. yeah. I've relied on an objective, yes. and I look at a speech that contemplates in an existential yes. way yeah. Very frightening. It yeah. feels like you're falling instead right. of acting. <laughs> yes. This is a very vital question, mm. what you just asked. It's extremely. So, I don't know if, if the, the, the last words of each of the lines also uh, almost completely give you the sense of, yeah. you know, dignity of what the play is. Yeah. The play to come, you know, mutiny. dignity, scene, mutiny, unclean, yeah. foes, life, overthrow, yeah. strife. Should we just read them all together? Yeah. Just, just good, say, yeah. that's yeah. excellent, Denny. Mm -hmm. Right. Dignity, scene, mutiny. mutiny. By repeating the last words of a speech, we hear the through line of its story. The words lead us through and are often rather exciting. Remove, stage, attend, mend. It's brilliant, isn't it? That's fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> you, you, you stay now. <laughs> Can we just get a little bit together? And what I just want to do is just jostle each other gently while you're doing it, but quite quietly. Yeah. Two households, both alike in dignity, in fair Verona, where we lay our scene. From ancient grudge. This exercise stops us making the voice behave in the way we think it should. It not only releases the basic violence in the writing, words like grudge, rage, it also releases something in our own voice, some kind of natural, primitive response. Okay, can you feel that? You see, that, it, I mean, just this is a silly thing because it's an exercise, but it, you'd still get irritated when you, <laughs> <laughs> don't you? And it just releases something in that language. I tell you what I would like, and that's one person to read it in the center. <laughs> no, because I want us just to repeat words that, without looking at it, but the words which you feel grab you at, as he does it. Make it up to you. <laughs> <laughs> Two households, households. households, both alike in dignity. Alike. Alike. dignity. In fair Verona, Just get a bit where, 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 Verona. In fair Verona, where, where we lay our scenes. Where? Don't wait for them. From ancient grudge, grudge. to new mutiny, mutiny. where mutiny. civil blood Sh makes civil hands unclean. unclean. From forth of fatal laws and face to foes, foes. 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 pair of star crosses take their life. 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 Whose misadventure, misadventures doth with their death, death. death. bury their parents' Berry. strife. 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 The fearful passage Berry. of their death-marked love, death love and the continuance of their parents' rage, 
but their children's end north could remain removed is now the two hours traveling of our state. The which, if you with patient ears attend, what here shall miss, our toil shall strive to mend. Well, thanks. It's useful just to hear it by one person, actually. There's lots of things happening. What I'm interested in is that word households. That's what we have to grab onto. Because it's not like two houses, is it? It's like households, families, airing cupboards, larders, everything. Households. And it takes a long time to say. Two households. Both alike in dignity. And then you've got quite short things after that. But these are all things that we can help. The first two lines were set it up. And then it kind of speeds, it seems to have this kind of yes. momentum which goes from ancient grudge break to new beauty. It sort of really draws yes. you into the story. Mm -hmm. yes. And then it then it sort of yeah. it, and then yeah. it then it sort of slows down towards yeah. the end. It That's right. Changes again. Yes, and then it opens it out to in a slightly more philosophical way. Yeah. From ancient grudge break. I mean it's very violent that. I mean, if we think of that language, that is violent language. It's weird that how you can get taken in by the sexy words. Yes. Like um, break and mutiny and civil blood. And then if you actually look at the more personal words, like there, the amount of time Shakespeare repeats there, yeah. keeping it personal, keeping it about them, yeah. you know, their death, their parents, yeah. their death mark love. The mm. countenance of their parents' rage. If you actually just mm. went through yeah. and picked the, the words that aren't obviously yeah. sexy and just yeah. went through, mm. you know, those <laughs> sort of ones, you'd find maybe <laughs> how he kind of keeps going. Because in some yeah. cases, when we did that, we did go through those words because they're really good and actors yeah. love them because we'll make exactly. them out no, and you know, have brilliant. a good time with yeah. these. Also, when Toby was reading, it's like the, the storytelling words are like things like which yes. and from, yeah. and that's yeah. what kind of keeps it like, going yeah. in a way. And, you know, you, you yeah. tend to lose those as well. Yeah. Is there anything that you would like to say after doing that exercise? Is there anything that sort of came to you that, like, revealed itself? One thing that I, I think as, as an American and as an African-American that in approaching Shakespeare, we find that the words get in the way, basically because we come from such a, an emotional, feeling, visceral kind of immediacy yes. that the words are like, you, you know, you're sitting waiting to say, but just could you just give me the idea of what you're talking about yeah. and get yeah. on with it? So that yeah. to yeah. jump on top of the word or to be on the word, what you said, it made it visceral and alive in a different way. That kind of on it, you know, from seeing it worked that way, I never saw it work right. on the word like th that viscerally. Well, that's exactly what I, I'm hoping that it will bring together that area of the visceral feeling of it, and yet with the meaning and, you know, yeah. and, and getting that balance right. That's great. Mm -hmm. Just to summarize and sum up what we've just done for a moment, I hope what we've done is hear an underlying beat and the, the stressed and unstressed syllables uh, going knocking against each other, where it's irregular, where the sense stress and the meter stress is again knocking against each other, and the need to lay the first line of a speech, like in two households, we need that moment to just let the premise of it drop in. So much to do with this language is about giving the right spaces between the words. Each line is open to so much variation, syncopation I like to call it, like a line of jazz or blues or reggae. And this variation is what gives the wonderful energy and excitement to the speaking, for everyone will hear it differently. <laughs> Working on sonnets is very good because it gives you a shape of something, a shape of thinking, a form. It makes you aware of that. Now, a sonnet is made up of 14 lines, and a speech from a play can be three or four times as long. Yet there is a basic structure which is common to both. What is important is for us to realize that you lay the subject almost at the beginning of something, and then you argue it through and then you come to some kind of conclusion. So to be or not to be, that is the question, that's the premise. Then he argues it through. It is very important for us to ask ourselves, how much do we argue things through to ourselves? We don't just feel, really, do we? So let's, with that in mind, just read it quite quietly. 
the expense of spirit in a waste of shame is lost in action. But it doesn't stop there, does it? Go on. And until action, action lost is what? Perversion, murderous, bloody, flailing, savage, extreme, rude, cruel, not, not to trust, trust enjoy no sooner, but despise his strength. Has reason hunted, no sooner had, has reason hated, as a swallow bait, on purpose laid to make the taker mad, mad in pursuit and in possession, so had, having, and in quest to have, extreme, a bliss in proof, and proved a very woe, before a joy proposed, behind a dream. All this the world well knows, yet none knows well to shun the heaven that leads men to this hell. What words, you know, immediately stick out for you? Faith. Yes. Yeah. Because what happens when a, when a fish Dream. eats bait? Dream. Yeah, Wait. to me. Murderous. Murderous. Murderous, yes. And hunted. It's almost like a pendulum. The way the antithesis kind of comes... Yeah. Uh, as you said, hunted and hated and a bliss and proof. It almost musically says, on the one hand, there's this, on the other hand, there's that. Yeah. It's this and it's that, and it's this and it's that, and it's this yeah. all the way through. Yeah. It goes past, present, future, past, present, future. It's yeah. had, true. having, that to is, have. Yes, that's very true. Very important. So if you feel lusty, yeah. it's yeah. whatever. But if until you perform yeah. it, It'll be these things, so you, yeah. you're not, you're in a dilemma. It's yeah, before, during, and after. And yeah. <laughs> once, you, once you've done it. So let's oh, just clarify, you know, what it does How? mean. What would you say the premise was? Can we just do it? Lust yes. stinks. What? Lust stinks. Lust stinks. Lust stinks. Lust stinks. A spirit is a, a euphemism for semen, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The expense of spirit no, and a waste, waste of shame is lust, lust in action. In action. Okay. So it is about, the, uh, you know, having sex uh, with our love, presumably, that's what it is. Great. Does that feel good? It was good for me. <laughs> <laughs> Hang about there. <laughs> Let's do it one time, as sharp as that, just walking quite briskly. There's not a lot of space, but walking quite briskly around the studio, changing direction absolutely on every punctuation mark. Just really brisk, okay? Go. The expense of spirit is a waste of shame in lust in action. Until the passion of lust is purchased, murderous, bloody, full of names, sadder, strange, rude, cruel, not cruel, not cruel, but the fire is a shame. Punctuation is always a good guide to the syntax of the thought. How one thought is always provoking the next, feeding the next and how our thoughts are always on the move. Of course, different editions of Shakespeare have different punctuation, and the actor always has to choose which version makes most sense to their concept of the part. It is, isn't it? Yeah. So it's telling us where the blood is. I mean, she's feeling hot, basically. It just gives us a whole different dimension to how the thoughts are moving, and yet it is thinking, isn't it? It's like what you were saying about this, the, the monologues. I mean, so, yeah. you know, to to wander around in a fit, it, yes. of course, brings it all there. And then, yes. but to, to have to actually make it clear to an audience and and just and, be still. Yes. And, you know. yes. Any exercise can't actually answer you doing it in performance, can it quite? Well, it can but inform. but it hopefully informs that. Right. Well, we're the pulling. Yeah. yeah. I felt so alive when we were doing this pulling right. thing. Yeah. And I don't have the same question. Yes. Yeah, like, I mean, maybe yeah. it's just an awareness, but. I think it is that. Yeah. I think it, it's somehow making the language as active in its way. Right. I never know what, what my need is, except yeah. that it's written on the page and I have to say That's it. That's right. And there oh, is oh, a oh. physical. I mean, apart from what it means, that your insides start getting <laughs> shuddery. You know, you oh, feel that yes. physical, yes. you know, the, the physical yes. nature of language. Mm -hmm. I think it's just literally, you know, you're moving these muscles around, mm -hmm. and 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 however he structures it, that mm -hmm. that you know, you're 
your ribs are moving in a different way and actually it stops you thinking too much so that you can just as you start to work on something hand yourself over in right. a way. Yes. Yes. yes i mean there is no answer quite right. to what you said do you know what i mean right. and right. every actor is different and has to find their right. own link right. in a way and way in this sonnet is so jagged in the way it uses the meter savage extreme rude cruel not to trust precisely because it is going against the regular beat, knocking against it, I like to say, we are shocked into realizing the violent turmoil in his mind. This is the passion and chaos which is always present in Shakespeare. It is never that well behaved. We must somehow keep that experience of the exercise alive in our blood. <laughs> Now we're going to look at how all these points of rhythm can inform a character. I want to look at two speeches, one of from The Winter's Tale, Leontes, and then Capulet from Romeo and Juliet. There are three characters in this scene, Leontes, King of Sicilia, his wife Hermione, his friend Polixenes, King of Bohemia. Leontes, having set up a situation where he has asked Hermione to persuade Polixenes to stay a month longer with them in Sicilia, he then eavesdrops on their conversation. And as he listens, he becomes convinced that Hermione is unfaithful. Is whispering nothing? Is leaning cheek to cheek, is meeting noses, kissing with inside lip, stopping the career of laughter with a sigh, a note infallible of breaking honesty, horsing foot on foot, skulking in corners, wishing clocks more swift, hours, minutes, noon, midnight, and all eyes blind with the pin and web but theirs. Theirs only that would unseen be wicked. Is this nothing? Why then the world and all that's in it is nothing. The covering sky is nothing. Bohemia, nothing. My wife is nothing. Nor nothing have these nothings, if this be nothing. So there's a lot of movement there. Could you read it one more time? Can you just g come into the centre? Just get a bit more and just whisper back, at him, just round him, let him be in the centre a bit more. Just whisper back at him the words. That, just whisper them. Is whispering nothing? Is leaning cheek to cheek? Is meeting noses? Kissing with inside lips? Stopping the career of laughter with a sigh? A note infallible of breaking honesty. Horsing foot on foot, skulking in corners, wishing clocks more swift, hours, minutes, noon, midnight, and all eyes blind with the pin and web, but theirs, theirs only, would unseen be wicked. Is this nothing? Why, then the world and all that's in it is nothing. The covering sky is nothing. Bohemia, nothing. My wife is nothing. Nor nothing have these nothings, if this be nothing. Did that help at all? Yeah, it provided a kind of a resistance and, yeah. a, and, a, and, a, and a, a need to, to convince yeah. um, and, a, and a sort of paranoia. <laughs> yeah, exactly which I want. normally feel. <laughs> so it was kind of like being home. <laughs> right, stand up then. That's exactly what I wanted you to feel. And it was coming from all over the place. Right, just walk around and can you follow him around doing that? Okay. Is whispering nothing? Is leaning, chin, meeting noses, meeting. kissing with inside lips, stopping the career of laughter with inside. A note infallible of breaking honesty. Horsing foot on foot, skulking in corners, wishing clocks, more swift hours, minutes, noon, midnight, and all eyes. Blind with a pin and web, but theirs, theirs only, 
Unseen. That would unseen be wicked. Unseen. Is this nothing? Nothing. nothing. Why then, the world and all its things is nothing. 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 The covering sky is nothing. nothing. Bohemia, nothing. nothing. My wife is nothing, nor nothing. nothing. Have these nothings, if this be nothing. nothing. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> It's terrifying. Wait, I mean, yeah. like Edward Bond uh, would say that uh, words are like the top of an earth shift, basically. And they still are even in modern language, aren't they? Because sometimes we're covering up so much, but in a much more minimal way. But this uh, is like that, isn't it? It's huge. It's erupting all the time. It's all about the action. It's all yes. about, I mean, in this, what the speech is, is yeah. doing. And, and the tendency when you, you know, you, well, I have to read this in this class, so I better, like, you know, get it yeah. all. Yeah. And it's, of course, not about that, but that's, no. that's somehow, yeah. to, try, to try to break that habit. I mean, great. I mean, I don't want to be superficial about this, because when you're working on a character, it is different. I mean, had you been working on that right. for like three weeks, four right. weeks? Um, I have been. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> no, I mean, in Obviously relation to the whole, in relation right. to the whole play, right. there are many, many other considerations that you have to do. I'm just saying this because I don't want people to think that you've done that exercise and you know okay. that'll be it, for it, because it will change and change. And really, what I want to say is, is exercises need to be layered through rehearsal period. Because if you were halfway in, and then we did an exercise like that, not soon, then you would find different things because right. you would have been thinking about it so much. Right. But then hopefully that would release the thinking of it. Mm. What you've been I thought. Just read it. I found it was oh, horrendous, was moving. It? Yes, it really just does the first get before you. any. Yes. Also, just the absolute yes. simplicity of. It. I guess taking the onus off of it and saying, "Okay, yes. now now we're just going to read it." Yeah, but uh, I and and so your reaction about it being paranoid yeah. was, I mean, is dead on right. Yeah. And having done those exercises, were you working then, and then went back into re and then went it to play the scene? I think you would find a, a lot of difference. One question: When you're starting just to work on a part like yeah. like this, for yeah. instance, I mean, is to to me. It, it, is, is it just about finding the sense? I mean, you've got to, first of all, just simply start with the thought. And Absolutely. The, and, and, and then, so, so that the, even these exercises, I mean, because obviously it would help if I knew, the, if I knew it. So it's, it's like a, 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 a step process then. You're absolutely right. It, it, it's not much good doing this exercise until you've thought more about really? it. Really, yeah. And then you start to finding, you know, you will have a depth of, of um, perception about the character. Right. And then this will start to inform it right. and you, start you to help that? you really find the form of it so that you can marry what you feel with a form which may make it even stronger. What I'm really saying is going back to feeling the, the, the meter and everything of it, right. which will kind of give it its form. Does I that see. make any yes, sense? Yes, yes, yes. I find that um, often on the first day of rehearsal, you, mm. you have a read through. And often the best performances people give are at the read-through <laughs> because it's it's like instinctive. They, they're working purely instinctively mm. on uh, just like that. That that first yeah. reading was was very strong, and often like that exercise would be great when somebody in a way has thought too much about it and it suddenly yes. becomes strangled. Mm. Yeah, because yeah. often if you if you're just doing the sense, it, a speech becomes really boring, you know, yeah. because you're right. just working. Yeah. Whereas that kind of gets the. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of emotions now, I think this is very important to say because what or anything I say, I'm only working on and really emphasizing this area because this is the area that's left out so much. But it can't be done without a depth, otherwise it would be superficial. I think when you said you were paranoid by us chasing you, it's a natural response when people are <laughs> running after you and get a little freaked out. <laughs> but I think the, at the heart of the speech, when you were just reading it, you were feeling those feelings, and so when you were moving around, just whatever that was, that it was became heightened. Yes. You know, like if That's I was feeling good. sexy in that scene, maybe I would just become explosive with my yeah. sex or whatever, you know, or something else. Yeah. Or if I was feeling right. very sad, I might become, might discover the anger in that sadness yeah. or something. Right. So it's just another, it's yeah. just another level. Just do it one more time, quite quietly, but just being with it, and starting quite low, and just getting the sense that he's feeding himself. Yeah. His whispering nothing, his leaning cheek to cheek, his meeting noses, 
kissing with inside lip, stopping the career of laughter with a sigh, a note infallible of breaking honesty, horsing foot on foot, skulking in corners, wishing clocks more swift, hours, minutes, noon, midnight, and all eyes blind with the pin and web, but theirs, theirs only, that would unseen be wicked. Is this nothing? Why, well, then, the world and all that's in it is nothing. The covering sky is nothing. Bohemia, nothing. My wife is nothing, nor nothing have these nothings, if this be nothing. It's self-feeding in a way, isn't it? It it's always so much about staying in the moment and not getting ahead of yourself in yeah, these speeches yeah, because yeah. it's the tendency, as you say, is to... And, and that's what being on the word is so yeah. helpful because if you just... The minute you're ahead of yourself, yeah. you've, you've, you've lost it, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's just what and, I tend to and do. And yet there is this, you know, is whispering nothing, is leaning cheek to cheek, is meeting noses, kissing with inside lips, stopping stopping the career. I mean, it goes mad there. It's The meter is there underneath it. And the skill is to keep that meter somewhere there. Right. Which doesn't mean to say you've got to be regular, because often there's suspense there. You can suspend it, like you do in right. blues, blind with a pin and web, but theirs, theirs only, that would unseen be wicked. Is this nothing? It has a, a meter to it right. there, which we will go on looking at in a speech this afternoon. <laughs> And our Capulet. Juliet has refused to consent to marry Paris, Capulet's choice of husband for her. And she's in fact already married to Romeo without her father's knowledge. We hear Capulet's reaction in this highly charged speech. God's bread, it makes me mad. Day, night, hour, tide, time, work, play, alone, in company, still my care hath been to have her matched. And having now provided a gentleman of noble parentage, of fair demean, youthful, and nobly trained, stuffed, as they say, with honourable parts, proportioned as one's thought would wish a man, and then to have a wretched puling fool a whining mammet in her fortune's tender to answer, I'll not wed, I cannot love, I am too young, I pray you, pardon me. But, and you will not wed, I'll pardon you. Graze where you will, you shall not house with me. Look to it, think on't, I do not use to jest, Thursday is near. Lay hand on heart. Advise. And you be mine, I'll give you to my friend. And you be not. Hang. Beg. Starve. Die in the streets. For by my soul I'll ne'er acknowledge thee, nor what is mine shall never do thee good. Trust to it. Bethink you. I'll not be forsworn. It's astonishing. Yeah, it is astonishing. I mean, Capulet is one of those parts that you kind of you, yeah. you kind of gloss over. You think, That's oh, well, right. it's just, he's just the father, yeah. and he's. Yeah. 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 And it's extraordinary. Yeah. The anger, the rage that, that yes. was. This is the rage that was talked about in the prologue. Mm. Seems to have everything that a parent would ever say to a yeah. child. It's so shocking. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's the exact the opposite polish. of care and parenting. You know, right in her face. It's savage. Perhaps he's shocking himself as he's saying it, but mm. nevertheless, yes, he doesn't, that's what he he doesn't exactly stop him does. meaning yes. it or saying it. That's right. But does he mean to say that before he starts? Does he mean to say all of that? The thing that I find very yeah. difficult is the point at which decisions get made, because yes. I, I always want as an actor to take a long time to we have that all thing of working up to some yeah. emotion or finding it truthfully. Yeah. And, and Shakespeare's so rigorous. That you, you know, you want that the moment where your thinking matches his words. 
because um, we do think very quickly. But that quickly, point where we? the decisions are made, yes. to find that because out sometimes in the movement I think we have speech. made up our minds what we're going to do in our yes. stomachs yeah. before it comes to words, doesn't it? Yeah. And sometimes it, we don't. Sometimes we have to sort of think it gently as we go along and work it out. But the most exciting thing in watching something is yeah. when you're watching the moment yeah. mm -hmm. yes. when the thought is formed. Yeah. And that's, that's what you're chasing all the time. Yeah. It's like when you were splitting up, ma making us get on the word. It's yes. going back to the same yes, thing. Exactly. You don't take for granted what you're going to say or where no. you're going to arrive. No. It does seem, because in a way it is a proclamation. It's something he has thought about, but it's in the telling, in the saying of it, it's as though he gets carried away I in think the that's the important yeah, thing, is that probably he has made up his mind, but actually starting to speak and being involved in it, it becomes bigger, doesn't yes. it? It's it not, not an intellectual horrific. progression, it's not no, an, no. an argued He does say, speech. it makes me mad. Yeah, yes. right at the start. What, what mad does, what does madness yeah. do? Yeah. And it's that's like really the premise, isn't it? Makes bile, me mad, yeah. yeah. There's yeah. some fed upness there too. He's done everything that he could do to make this right, and you know, and you do this to me, so I'm fed up. And and being it. fed up spews all those things out. Mm -hmm. What he's saying is, you don't want to marry the person I want you to, therefore I'm going to disown you and chuck yeah. you out in the street. That, that is yeah. irrational. Yeah. He tells Paris, win her heart, woo her. Yeah. Because my, my choice in this is just a part of her decision. Yeah. And suddenly in this scene, he just says, you're going to do it. Yeah. 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 Mm. So that's interesting. Someone mm. says, it, is the first God's breath? Is the God's bread? Where God's does that come from? What an expression. Yeah. Well, well, that's, well, that's communion, isn't it? Eucharist, yeah. Eucharist, yeah. Is, you know. What I mean is, it's, it's, there's something interesting when a character say, says, God's bread, it makes me mad. You're not just mad, you're telling everyone around. It's like Lear yeah. in the banishment of Kent yeah. and Cordelia, when yeah. it's so obviously a rash thing to do, and yeah. he, he's almost aware of how rash it is. Yeah. I think he has a couple of those, too, yeah. moments of... Dear God, I'm. It ju I'm. I mean, I'm. Excuse me, but I'm just really pissed off about this. <laughs> it's, it's sort of it's a like a kind of speech about failure, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, the more he fails, the more he speaks. Right. The more he keeps going. If he yeah. if he succeeded, he would yeah. say it in one line. Yeah. Right. But he right. keeps going one line after another, <laughs> and he fails. And he just because the thing is quite hard. Is, what I don't understand is a self feeding thing. Yeah. Because I get a bit scared of things like that. Because that sometimes to me is when an actor is doing it all by himself, and you suddenly feel really oh, cold on stage yeah. because you think, and what's yeah. my job as Juliet to stand here and listen to him rattle yeah. on and yeah. bore the ass off me? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I mean, it's like, it's like you know that his. It's got to be about her. Yeah. It's got to be about his inadequacy and about right. her. And she annoys him so yeah. much that she he keeps going yeah, on. Shame. When I said yeah. self-feeding, I, I wasn't self-feeding emotionally, but the one thought leads, makes him go. Of course, I agree with that, yeah. but it's like going yes. out. He's constantly yes. no, he is right. going out, right. and he yes. keeps failing. I mean, whether the failure's inside him or the failure's yeah. in her, you know, she's part of him, part of his blood, part of his humanity and his lack yeah. of humanity during that yeah. speech. And maybe his humanity is the failure, you know. Does he have to carry on because she doesn't say, I'll word. follow your word? Well, I mean, the thing, I mean, I think, that, go on. and a lot of these, I mean, I just, it's only a personal thing, but I just think a lot of these plays, the speeches can be very long. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason for that. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a lot of times because the character's failing miserably in the scene <laughs> to succeed. And he is like, and the reason we, it's like the reason yeah, we keep talking yeah, to people. Yeah, it's listen. really to justify yourself. You speak to justify yourself, don't you? But, it's, but Cicely, are yeah. you saying that in the text itself there are clues as to what his state of mind is? I think that so, it, yeah. That if the text yeah. were more yeah. Just as, linear, yeah. would, he would be less yeah. emotionally disturbed yeah. by what he's saying? Yeah, just, just do that thing. We'll all get up. But if you um, just change direction on, if you, on Bug's Bread, on the punctuation mark for a minute. Right. Okay. Look, God's so, Bread. It makes me mad. Day, night, hour, tide, time, work, play, alone, in company. Still my care hath been to have her match. Lay hand on heart, advise, and you be mine. I'll give you to my friend. And you, you can hear what is happening to the rhythm, how choppy it is and how volatile. The thoughts evolve as the feelings grow. It plums a deeper understanding. Nor what is mine shall never do thee good. Trust to it. Bethink you. 
I'll not be forsworn. It's so clear that he's having he's having trouble. Yes. That it's that the key That's to it. This, <laughs> I don't mean you. I don't mean you. What I mean is, but I don't mean the actor. I mean, I, I had the same problem when I, I was playing Claudio in Much Ado, and he has to tear Hero to ribbons. I was doing it over and over, and thinking, what a mean guy. What a mm. terrible thing to do. Mm. What an awful thing occurrence. When then I started to really finally work on it, I realized. Unless he's having in every bit as much uh, pain as Hero is, mm -hmm. this scene doesn't work. Yeah. And Shakespeare gives it to you. Yeah. This scene, it's in no way, it's no, it's not an oil slick like Iago. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, 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 yeah. it's someone obviously yeah. having so much trouble doing what yeah. he's doing. But I scarcely really thought about a single word in a way. Yeah. Mm. What we're really doing is, is, is thinking about the move, uh, moving and fighting for breath. Yeah. Mm. That becomes a kind of, that's your objective, yeah. is to get these words yeah. out. Obviously, then, so you then you have yourself... to come back and find the meaning again. Doesn't that also, that, that sort of exercise stops you acting between the lines? Yeah. yeah. You don't yeah. kind of yeah. try yeah. and Just... have a mind change. <laughs> you great. actually, yeah. Yeah. the lines do it yeah. for you. What I hope it does is exactly that, so that we stop explaining what is happening <laughs> in any way, or describing or explaining, but the actual words are the impetus of it all. Aren't they? They mm. they make it happen. Can we pause and try and think in between the lines? It's as if Shakespeare hasn't given us enough. <laughs> as if, <you> know, <laughs> as if extra thoughts are needed. Yeah. And uh, well, I, I wait, beg wait, to. Wait, <laughs> it's probably gave enough. Him heaviness, fatness. Well, it's brilliant. Out of yes. breath. Yes. I mean, yes. drinks too much. Yes. Eats too much. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> probably right. <laughs> no, I mean, that, that hang, beg, starve, <laughs> and then trying yeah. to. And, and one more thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. When Paul was saying it, and he said about oh, the the, yes. the um the thing from the prologue is that this was the rage of the yeah. piece. It was all it, it, for coming from that is also the love from the piece. Right. I mean, it's also he's Thank speaking to, to somebody from the day yeah. she was born. Yeah. He has love, yeah. and it's love that he's throwing out the door. And maybe the rage will help him throw that love out the door. But there yeah. is. As much as it is the rage, it is also the rage the love. wouldn't be there if it weren't for the love. For the love, yeah. I mean, the first time he read it, yeah. the last part of the scene when he just sat there, he, he was he was moved, he was yeah. broken because yeah. he loved. Yeah. Isn't the, the stopping and the thinking as much about the the this sort of need to to communicate the meaning of the of the speech to the audience? I mean, yeah. which is which is a, a terrible trap. Yeah. It's a terrible trap, yeah. but it's it's like, oh, if I'm really, if I if yeah. I really give you this yeah. word and that, I mean, it's 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 a sort of a it's a tightrope. Mm -hmm. because it is a tightrope, and you can't say it's one or the other no. because you've got to let them have the time. Yeah. But what we do tend to do is is think about it too much. We make decisions that make such and such a word yeah. will be stressed and that right. will yeah. be effective. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and, and yeah. especially yeah. if you're an actor in the audience, you know it. You know yeah. it. That, yeah. That's yeah. not really in the scene. Yeah. It's not really yeah. in the part. And it's a decision the in the bathroom. The often, you know. <laughs> in the structure of that speech, they're like clues. You were saying earlier, they're like clues on the state of mind of yeah. the person. Oh. It's like there are two lists. Yes. And it's like in between the list, yeah. it's when he's doing the list, he's out of control. Yes, and then he, he gets, yes. and then he kind of stops and he, he tries to pull it back together and this he tries to good. be rational about yes. it. And yeah. then he, he loses it again he because loses, he's being yeah. rational about it and thinking about yeah. the arguments. He, right. he loses yes. it again. There's another huge list that's where he right. goes out of control yes. and it no, culminates in that. Yes. And all right. that comes in, you see. Mm. So it's neither being only being moved or only right. being angry. That's really what I mean by saying you can't understand till you speak it aloud, mm -hmm. because kind of all of it together. Yeah, one, yeah. Might, might one way you do it, and that feeds you, mm. and then in the end you make your decision. You know, you make your choices. It teaches you. It tells yeah. us who we are. <laughs> And now something quite different, a speech from Coriolanus. Listen here for a very different rhythm. The scene is a dialogue between Sicinius and Brutus, two tribunes of the people. Coriolanus has come to seek the vote of the people, but they both know, both the tribunes know that Coriolanus despises the people. Here, Brutus is describing how the people come out to cheer him. He is full of contempt. All towns see the 
and the delirious sights are spectacle to see him. Your prattling nurse in into rapture lets her baby cry while she chats him. The kitchen malkin pins her bridges lachrymal about her reachy neck, clambering the walls to hide him. Stalls, bulks, windows are smothered up, legs filled, and ridges forced with variable complexions, all agreeing in earnestness to see him. Cell shown flames to press among the popular throngs and puff to win a vulgar station. Our veiled dames commit the war of white and damask in their nicely gaudy cheeks to the wanton spoil of Venus' burning kisses. Such a parlor as if that whatsoever God who leads him were slyly crept into his human powers and gave him graceful posture. Right. I want to do two things with this. I want to look at where the argument changes because the extraordinary thing the, about the late plays is so often the thought comes to rest or stop in the middle of a line, right? So how do we deal with that and do we ignore the end of the lines or not? The consonants are very long, aren't they? All tongues takes quite an effort to say it. To say that all tongues. All tongues. Yeah. And the bleared sights are spectacle to see him. Your prattling nurse into a rapture lets her baby cry while she chats him. The kitchen mocking pins a richest lock from about reaching their clambering walls. This speech is great to work on. Compared to Capulet, the language is full, the vowels are long, and the consonants take time to speak. It is also quite complicated, and as in the late plays, the sentences break in the middle of the line very often, yet the movement in the line carries on, making the structure quite exciting. And this poses the question, how do we keep the energy going through the line, yet allow the full stop to happen, the thought to end? I want you to do the whole thing and kick something or do something like that at the end of every line, on the last word of every line. Okay, go. Sorry, that was a really silly exercise. Well, that, was fun. <laughs> that was the most fun. Positive, right. Positively <laughs> orgasmic. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that was great. But what I'm trying to do, this is really an exercise about structure. Because we've got two lots of structures going on, haven't we? Well, three lots. We've got the meter or tongue speak of him and the bleared sight. That's one energy going on. We've got an energy going from line to line. And that's what I think is difficult often for actors to find, is the way that the bleared sights what a spectacle to see him. It's always like there's a, a moment before the next line because that one word has is impelling something else. Am I making sense to you? Is it, there, always, there should be a moment or there shouldn't well, be? I'm not really saying should or shouldn't. Oh, please. Yes, <laughs> no, please tell me how to do this. <laughs> but I'm saying... I only have a few <laughs> <laughs> The possibility of what that does, isn't it really, is that that is the form it's written in, and each line has its space. Is it that there is sometimes a sense meaning for the break, that it make, well, makes so, more sense to have... Well, sometimes in the early plays, the sense comes to an end usually at the end of the line. The full stop is at the end of the line, normally. Uh, in this, the, the sense, the full stops come in the middle of a line. If you just read all tongues speak of him in the bleared sights of spectacle to see him, there is no point of it being written in lines. 
Do you see what I mean? But if you feel all tongues speak of him and the bleared sights, spectacled, maybe that gives us a kind of lift into the next. Are you so saying that, that there's an inherent poise at the end of every line of Shakespeare? That it, well, I think we have to take right that in. Yeah, I think we have to. I don't want to make any rules, but I think that this is part of it. That we have to hear what happens if we do that. Don't ignore it. That it ends there. Yes. And then there's a new. Thing. Yeah, okay. but I don't want you to think that you've got to keep slavishly to that because I'm not in, in uh, of that school at all. If, if at the, like the end of the first line, if you do take a break there, it's much easier to contrast bleared and sights, spectacled. A spectacle, yeah. Because the bleared sights, spectacle, that's brilliant because it's actually bending. yes, yeah. it keeps it positive, doesn't mm. it? Yeah. Let's do it for the argument because there's, uh, it's very good to keep putting our minds into the fact that nearly every speech that you get has an argument inside it. Right, so could I have you in like two lines, like you, that side, this side, you coming over this side. What I'd like to do is for this side to start, what the thing is to go down to every punctuation mark. So you speak the whole down to spectacle to see him. Or semicolon, uh, into a rapture, oh, you're practicing this, down to while she chats him. So either full stops or semicolon. Okay. Really, really thinking and letting one part of the argument feed the next. Okay, so that you keep on answering. Go. All, All tongues speak, speak of him, and the bleary sights are spectacled spectacle to see him. Your prattling nerves endure rapture. Let's, let's have baby cry, cry while she taps him. The kitchen malkin pins the richest lock from above her reaching neck, clambering the walls to hide him. Stalls, bolts, windows are smothered up. Let's fill them with his horse with variable complexions, all agreeing in earnestness to see him. Self shown flamen. To press among the popular throngs and puff to win a vulgar station. Our pale dames commit the war of white and dust in their nicely gaunt cheeks to the wands and spoil of Phoebus burning kisses. Such a pother as if that whatsoever God leads him was silent. crept into his human powers and gave him graceful posture. The actual form does something, doesn't it, to the argument itself? Um, what, I, I'm not clear about what is the what is the conflict. To me, it seems like it's just one thing is just leading to the next. Well, I think that's right. But I think there's an argument which fe one part of the argument feeds the next. And really, what I'm after is the argument happening. Perhaps I've misled you a little bit, uh, rather to to make it seem like an argument. But it isn't. It, it's actually one thing leads to the next, and it's an internal kind of dialogue that is going on, isn't it? To hear it. Seemed, it only without... English actors know exactly what Oscar, you're saying, oh, but none of See us it. do. Hello? Right, I think it is the word argument that has is, that is misled us, maybe, isn't it? It's is sort of an internal debate, basically. As opposed to a disagreement. As opposed, yes. You how you're questioning it. An really argument saying. in the sense, that just like a lawyer came to mind, you have an argument, it's an overall speech you're going to yeah. make, yeah. and yes. here's this well, point, and right, yes. to this point, I mean, my so, argument yeah. is one yeah. thing, but yeah. like building blocks. It's a kind of reasoning yeah. rather than an argument, yeah, yeah. yeah. which one, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. all, yeah, all this bitterness. file and all this builds up, yeah. which was a, this wonderful at last line, again, yes. graceful posture. This is what it is. But it's also, calm and beautiful thing results out of all this. It's such a pother. I mean, what word, what does that mean? It's sort of like a makeup word, isn't it? And it's absurd. There's always absurdity there in Shakespeare. But it's because Victor he doesn't James. understand. He can't see what they're looking at. Yeah. And he can't yeah. see it to this extent. You know? yes. And it, yes. yes. And that such a power that comes at the end of that incredibly long sentence that you were wondering when you would ever be able to breathe in. Right there. You don't breathe until you get, you get to right. an right. Exactly. Yeah. exactly, yes. But can you, can you break up a line to breathe? I mean, if you, I mean, is that like, is, you just don't do that? Oh, you, you know what I mean? Just asphyxiate yeah. yourself if you, you don't. Just, <laughs> <laughs> or do you just fall on the floor? Yeah. That's it. I mean, our veiled dames commit the war of wine and down again, and as they go to cheeks to the wand and spoil the fever spring kisses, there's one. Actually, yeah. go right cheeks. You could take a breath after that. No, you should be able to get to the one. Oh, yeah. I guess you're right. It's just knowing it. It's just knowing it. You see, when you don't know, I mean, we never actually run out of breath when we're talking. We go on and on and on. Do you know what I mean? Because we know we're going to have to take a breath and we make it stop there. Now, 
I want to look at something quite different. It's Sonnet 138, and I want to do it because I want it to alert us to games in Shakespeare, sense of wordplay, which is always there in Shakespeare, because there's always humour somewhere around. Look particularly at the puns in it. When my love swears that she is made of truth, I do believe her, though I know she lies, that she might think me some untutored youth, unlearned in the world's false subtleties, thus vainly thinking that she thinks me young, although she knows my days are past the best. Simply I credit her false speaking tongue, on both sides thus is simple truth suppressed. But wherefore says not she, she is unjust? And wherefore say not I that I am old? <laughs> oh, love's best habit is in seeming trust, and age in love loves not to have years told. Therefore I lie with her, and she with me, and in our faults by lies we flattered be. <laughs> it's, really, it's, it's, it's wonderful. It has so many layers, this sonnet of experience, you know, and it just goes deeper and deeper. Well, I get the fact that um, he's having a great time being an older man, apparently having some kind of affair with a younger woman, that uh, they comfort each other with lies, yes. and that that's fine, because they know that's their relationship. Right. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's most relationships. Careful. <laughs> and um, actually, because of the thing we've been doing, yeah. I was able to connect this in a whole other kind of way oh, with the uh, oh, uh, breath thing. So yeah. I was able to put things right. together and get total ideas and, and, and oh, make it work for me. Um, so I'm having much more fun with it. And I did find that uh, it was not this deeply romantic kind of thing, but more... Um, uh, a very light and kind of jolly kind of thing to say. And yet it is both, really, isn't yes. it? Yeah. There's other things going on as well, isn't it? Oh, lie and lie. I yeah. lie with um, her and, and lie. puns. How many oh, puns can you find? Yeah, that's lots yeah. of double entendres. Yes. Yeah. Would you choose a mate? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 no, not a woman, a, a, a friend, a bloke friend. Oh, all right. I'm a bloke. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what I want you to do, darling, what I want you to do, Samuel, is can you just sit there as though you're having a drink in a bar? Sure. Is that all right? And just tell him. Yeah, oh, and you, no... Yes, you're out there as well. Just sit on there. They want me to stand. <coughs> so we'll have to stand as if we're in a club. Looking All right, down looking down. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's even better. You're looking down the bar. Right, that's brilliant. <laughs> right, okay. When my love swears that she is made of truth, I do believe her, though I know she lies. <laughs> That she might think me some untutored youth, unlearned in the world all sex. <laughs> Thus vainly thinking that she thinks me young. <laughs> Although she knows my days are past the best. <laughs> I sim simply I credit her false speaking tongue. On both sides, thus is simple truth suppressed. <laughs> but wherefore says not she that she is unjust? And wherefore say not I that I am old? Ah, <laughs> oh, all love's best habit is in seeming trust. And age in love loves not to have years told. Therefore I lie with her and she with me. And in our faults by lies, we flattered be. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> it's great. So can you hear that? I mean, it, it goes on from la layer to layer, doesn't it, somehow? Each time you find something slightly different, it's like a, a cryptic crossword, really. <laughs> that, was, that was great. Well, we've known each other for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was brilliant. Poured out my inner stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what did he say? Poured out my inner stuff. <laughs> Are you all right with that? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you can be a footnote somewhere in there. Uh, <laughs> oh, wait till I get home. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how when you just give something a simple place and specificity, the way you guys leaned against the railing was like, <laughs> suddenly the whole thing yeah. changed. Yeah. And all the words became yeah. so much more uh, specific and and uh, and funny and, and the floor we sat on reeked of beer well, yeah that's, <laughs> true. Well, that's a whole other and, story. and he was quite slow with it really wasn't he you see i mean <clears throat> this is the opposite but it, we we really were able to take those words in also his relationship with paul was very honest but he, your relationship with us was kind of like you were going to be deceitful mm -hmm. you know right. it was like you were picking yeah. out somebody to have a a, a lie with. That was brilliant because it just um, <clears throat> really illustrated the sense about uh, language always having, you know, double meanings. Really, the ambiguity, ambivalence of it. I mean, I do think we always think we're very logical about how we, you know, run our lives, but in fact we are not. We're much more ambivalent in in how we operate, I think. Things like, you know, there's a wonderful example, for instance, in Leontes in Winter's Tale, go play, boy, play. Thy mother plays and I play too. And that word play shifts from the sense of child play to love play and then to the sense of playing a part. There are all those things happening all the time and people enjoy that. I mean, children love nursery rhymes, don't they? And they love it if you sort of make them silly at the end and don't go quick. But they love wordplay. And that is part of it, and it's part of the joy of it. I would just like to finish the work on this sonnet by listing the puns, the wordplays, which it is so full of, and which makes it so fascinating. Words like made of truth could be made, M-A-D-E, or made, M-A-I-D. Subtleties could be subtle ties. Vainly thinking that she thinks me young. Vainly has two meanings. Simply I credit. Simple truth. Again, more than one meaning. Love's best habit, custom or clothes, is in seeming trust. And of course that last wonderful play on the word lie. Therefore I lie with her and she with me. And in our faults, by lies, we flattered be. Now we have enjoyed this and laughed, and perhaps a little too much, because the sonnet is also serious in that it expresses very subtly the layers of experience and feeling which accrue with age. And this, of course, is done through humour and a certain absurdity. But this only makes it the more poignant. In this next tape, take two, we will first be focusing on the vocabulary. That is how the language Shakespeare uses in each play takes us into the world of that play and is intrinsic to the subtext in that play. For it is through the choice of language and imagery that we as an audience enter the world of the play, that other world which takes hold of our imagination and which excites us. We will also be looking at the structure of speeches and the whole balance between thought and emotion, so important for now when our whole style of acting and tradition has become much more rooted in emotion. And of course we will keep referring back to the work on meter and rhythm which we have been looking at here.